morning and welcome to St. Anne's on this second Sunday of Lent. My name is Hans Schmeisser and I will be sharing a few brief announcements before the liturgy begins this morning. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce our vestry person of the day, Kathy Moreno. Everyone say hey to Kathy. Um, if you don't know Kathy, she's a great person uh, to talk to if you have any questions or concerns about St. Anne's. Uh, now for the announcements. All of us are especially grateful to Mother Tar Drazdowski for being with us today in Mother Leanne's absence. She came to us from Cordial this morning to preach and celebrate the Eucharist, and we appreciate her ministry with us this morning. Mother Leanne planned to be on vacation this weekend, but ended up homesick with COVID. So prayers for Mother Leanne, along with her son Abe, so prayers for Abe's too. Uh, they both have a mild case and plan to be back uh, up and running in a few days. Today's loose plate offering will go to the clergy discretionary fund, which we use so that when people come to us for help with their rent or their utilities, we can give them a helping hand. This ministry depends entirely on our donations as it is not part of the church's budget. This is probably the most constantly in demand outreach that we do, so please give today as you are able. If you are paying with a check, please make that marked as to St. Anne's discretionary fund. Our confirmation classes uh, will meet together this morning in room 102. If you are thinking about baptism or confirmation at Easter, please join us this morning. Brandon Medley uh, can answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Please stand as you are able now for the processional hymn.
reading from Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall rise, give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Please join with me to pray together Psalm 22, verses 22 to 30, as found in your bulletin. Praise the Lord, you that fear him and stand in awe of him. O offspring of Israel, all you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them, but when they cry to them, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall be eaten, be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families and the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord, he rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. And they shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving need, deeds that he has done. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, Faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. 
Now the words he was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd, and with his disciples he said to them, If anyone want to be 
become my followers. Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will be ashamed. And when he comes in his glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Peter, Peter, Peter. A beloved disciple, a confessor of the true identity of Jesus as the Messiah, a witness of the transfiguration, and a disciple who has an uncanny knack of saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Truth be told, we are all Peter on his best day and on his worst. This morning in the gospel, Jesus has been teaching his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the religious establishment, be killed, and then rise from the dead three days later. To be sure, these words were hard to swallow. None of the followers of Jesus could have imagined that their beloved teacher, their rabbi, their master, would be killed. What did it mean for his ministry, for them and for his followers? For Peter, he thought of Jesus' death was more than he could handle. Previously, in the same chapter of Mark, when Jesus asked Peter who he thought he was, Peter said, you are the Messiah. But now, after hearing the foretelling of his death, Peter pulls Jesus aside and says, this is not consistent with you being the Messiah. How could Peter have gotten this so wrong? Why was Peter's perception of how the Messiah's life was to play out so different from what Jesus had just told his disciples? The clues can be found in the Messianic promise. The Messianic expectation, expectation varied among the Hebrew people. The com most common was the one that the Messiah was, once the Messiah was identified, he would deliver the Jews from the Roman Empire's oppression and restore the power of the Davidic kingdom. 
It was believed that since Galilee was the hotbed of revolutionary activity, the Messiah would come out of that region. Once the Messiah was identified, they believed that he would be the one to liberate the children of Israel and restore power to the Davidic throne. The Messiah, Peter and many others were looking for, would rule with power and might and not be killed at the hands of his enemies. Jesus rebukes Peter with very harsh words, which must have cut him to the core. Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things, the human expectations for the Messiah. Like Peter, we often create a Jesus to be the kind of God we want him to be. When we pray, we frequently ask for things on the behalf of our loved ones who are sick or suffering from adversity. We pray about our children, our jobs, our church, and all manner of things that are heavy on our hearts. Much of the time, we are focused on temporal or worldly things and not on heavenly things. Our own wants and desires consume us, and we lose sight of asking God for what is best for us. We generally ask for our will to be done, not his will to be done. In our gospel reading, Jesus continues to teach the crowd and his disciples and says to them, if anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. To be a faithful follower of Jesus is no easy task since we have the propensity to want to chart our own course and destiny and create our own God who grants our desires. But Jesus calls us to take up our cross and follow him, not to walk beside him, but to follow him. The cost of discipleship does not come easy or without sacrifice. The life of a Christian is not a fairy tale or without trial and tribulation. Jesus promises that as his disciples, we will experience both. But we never have to face it alone. Jesus promises us that he will be with us to the end of the age. At some point in our Christian journey, we discover that by losing our life and following Jesus, we gain a life that is more abundant and more joyful than we could ever imagine. When we nestle ourselves in the Father's love, then we begin to live in God's kingdom in real time. God's kingdom, in God's kingdom, there is more love and less drama, more love and less hate, and more self-sacrifice than self-indulgence. The joy, and that seems like an oxymoron when we're talking about Lent, the joy of observing a holy Lent is found in the realization that once we align ourselves in the way of the cross and repent and return to the Lord, we find a crucified and risen Savior who embraces us and says, I love you no matter what. Whatever you have done, whatever you have said, 
I love you. He says to us, come to me all who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Believe in me and I will give you eternal life. Our colic this morning reminds us if we believe in a God whose glory is always to have mercy, may we seek his mercy and learn to follow in the footsteps of his son with penitent hearts and steadfast faith. Amen. Please stand as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Give praise, all you who fear the Lord. Proclaim God's greatness. With thankful hearts, let us pray. O righteous God, increase our faith. Lord Jesus, you invite us to follow you. Give your church the courage and will to risk any and everything for the sake of the gospel. May we be bold and witness and resolute in discipleship. O righteous God. God the King, you rule over the nations. Hear the cries of those living in poverty. Give the leaders of nations a heart for the poor. O righteous God. God of Sarah, you bring life out of barren places. Renew the creation. Forgive us for our misuse and neglect of your gifts. Help us to live as good stewards. We give you thanks for Susie Peters and Lisa Meadows as they celebrate birthdays. O oh, righteous God. <clears throat> o oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to the church in this city. 
Strengthen your parishes as we make our Lenten journey. May we faithfully increase known your saving deeds. O oh, righteous God. Gracious Lord, you hide not your face from those in need. We trust in your faithfulness. Hear our prayers for those in pain and distress. We pray especially for Tyler, Randy and Donna, Mona, Phyllis, Peggy, Larry, Kay, Charlotte, Gerald and Nancy, Elsa, Chappie and Sarita, Sheila, Sally, Tommy, Jackie, Crisp, Paula, Grace, Shine, and Michael and Nancy, O oh, righteous God, ever-living ever, ever God, you give life to the dead and call into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, we trust in your eternal promises and look to the day of resurrection. O oh, righteous God. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not asking in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord always be with you. our visitors and guests, we would like for you to know that our table is open to all baptized Christians. There are several ways for you to receive communion. 
If you would like to receive, to receive the bread, you just simply place your hands like this, and then uh, you consume that, or you save it and hand it back to the chalice administrator, and they will dip it into the cup of wine. If you want to come to the altar for a blessing, then you come and cross your arms like this, so that the priest, so that I know uh, that you would like to receive a blessing as opposed to receive uh, the communion.
The service continues with Eucharistic Prayer C on page 369. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought, us, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood we are reconciled, by his wounds we are healed, and therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly course, with prophets, apostles, martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the, temp from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal that the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us 
in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor and glory from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Our service continues on page 366 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The world now is too dangerous and too beautiful for anything but love. May your eyes be so blessed you see God in everyone. Your ears so that you hear the cry of the poor. May your hands be so blessed that everything you touch is a sacrament. Your lips so you speak nothing but truth with love. May your feet be so blessed to run to those who need. And may your heart be so opened, so to set on fire, and through you, God's love transforming everything. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Our service has ended, and now we begin the work of the gospel as we leave this holy space. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.